Okay, so what we're going to do right now is, with complex numbers, simplify expressions. So, first we're going to start by just simplifying powers of i. Remember, any power of i greater than 1 raised to an integer power, you need to simplify it down. So, i to the 43rd, remember what you're going to do here is, you're going to take the exponent, okay? What, you, what we know is i to the 4th is 1. So when you're able to make those groups of i to the 4th times i to the 4th times i to the 4th, whatever the last one is, that's what it's going to simplify down to. So to figure that out, we take 43 and we divide it by 4. Okay, That's going to give us 10.75. Okay, You can even just use your calculator. Okay, Right into the calculator, 43 divided by 4 is 10.75. So this is a remainder of 3. Whoop. Remainder of 3. That means this simplifies to be i to the 3rd, and i to the 3rd is negative i. Okay, next, i to the 100th. So take the exponent, divide it by 4. That gives you 25. Okay, no remainder. Remainder is 0. That means this is the same as i to the 4th, and i to the 4th is 1. Okay, remember, 0.25 is remainder 1, 0.5 is remainder 2. 0.75 is remainder 3, and no remainder means okay, that it went in evenly. If you divide by 4, you only have three remainders possible, 1, 2, 3, or it went in evenly. So 30, take 30, divide it by 4, it's going to give you 7.5. So 0.5, that's remainder 2, so this simplifies to be i squared. Okay, i squared is the same as negative 1. Okay, remember the wheel, i, negative 1, negative i, 1, i, okay? It's always going to simplify to be one of those four. Okay, so in number four, we have 2i times 2i, so it's already in terms of i, so we can multiply these together. It's going to be 6i squared. i squared can be simplified. Anytime you have a power other than i to the first, you have to simplify it. So this is going to be 6 times negative 1. That's negative 6. So it turns out to be the real number negative 6. In number 5, don't break the rule that says you can't just say that this is a square root of 20 because these are both imaginary numbers. So what you have to do is you have to write them in terms of i. So square root of negative 10 is i square root 10. Square root of negative 2 is i square root 2. Now, when you multiply radicals together, you multiply the outsides one term by one term. Coefficients on the radicals get multiplied together, i squared. Since they're both square roots, you're allowed to multiply the insides now because these are both positive. That's 20. i squared simplifies to be negative 1. The square root of 20, don't forget how to simplify your radicals. That's square root of 4 times the square root of 5. That's 2 square root 5 times 2 square root 5, that's just negative 2 square root 5. Okay, in number 6, it says we're going to take i to the 5th and multiply it by this co complex number 1 plus 2i. So we got to multiply i to the 5th times 1 is i to the 5th. i to the 5th times 2i is 2i to the 6th. i to the 5th, you need to simplify down. That's going to be... 5 divided by 4, right, is 1.25. So i to the 5th is the same as i to the 1st, which is just i. 6 divided by 4, that's 1.5. It's a remainder 2. So i squared, um, sorry, i to the 6th is the same as i squared, and i squared is negative 1. So this is i minus 2. But then remember, the standard form of a complex number is a plus bi. You should give the real part first and then give the imaginary part. So this is negative 2 plus i. Okay, so here's simplifying powers of i, simplifying expressions with just i in them. Uh, not all of them, this one has a complex number, sorry. So now we are going to move ahead and do adding and subtracting complex numbers. Okay, so in adding and subtracting complex numbers, okay, we're going to simplify. This is number 1, 2 minus 7i plus negative 3 plus 2i. So we can see that this is adding two complex numbers together. Here's the first complex number. Here's the second. 
And what this says is we're going to add together the complex numbers. So when you are adding and subtracting complex numbers, okay, you can combine the like parts. And you perform the operation of the like parts. So you're going to add together, okay, you're going to add together the real parts. That's going to be 2 plus negative 3. And then you're going to add together the imaginary parts. So that's going to be negative 7i plus 2i, okay? So now just simplify each part. So we have 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. Negative 7 plus 2i is negative 5i. Do not think you bring this plus sign down. This plus sign is telling you the operation that you should be doing with like parts. You should be adding like parts. So our sum is negative 1 minus 5i. So let's do another. Negative 6 plus i plus negative 8 minus 7i. So what operation are you doing between the two complex numbers? You're adding them. So that means we're going to add together the real parts and we're going to add together the imaginary parts. So the real parts, negative 6 and negative 8. So we're going to add together negative 6 plus negative 8. Okay, that's going to give us negative 14. Then we're going to add together the imaginary part, so that's going to be positive i and negative 7i, and i plus negative 7i gives you minus 6i. Remember, standard form of a complex number, okay, real part, then imaginary part. In number 3, okay, let's do 1 minus 5i minus 7 minus 3i. Okay, so we are subtracting in this problem. Oh, hopefully we can see it. Let me dim the lights. Oh, that doesn't work too well. Okay, I'm going to move this problem down a little so we can see it a little better. Number three, 1 minus 5i. Minus 7 minus 3i. Okay, in case you can't see that because of the light, I apologize. Okay, so we're going to subtract like parts. So we are going to subtract 1 from 7, 1 minus 7. And then we are going to subtract the imaginary parts, which are negative 5i minus negative 3i. So 1 minus 7 is going to give us negative 6, and negative 5i minus negative 3i, that's negative 5i plus 3i, that's negative 2i. Okay, we're going to do one more before we move on. Number 4, we will do 3 plus 2i minus 1 minus 4i plus i times, uh, we'll do 4 plus 2i. So the first thing I see is I'm adding and subtracting, but if you look here, I'm actually, I have some multiplying, and multiplying always comes before adding and subtracting, so this is actually the first piece I have to take care of. I have to multiply, that's going to give me 4i plus 2i squared. You do not leave it just like this because every time you see a power of i greater than 1, you need to make sure you're simplifying that down. i squared is negative 1. This is plus 2 times negative 1. This is negative 2. 4i minus 2, write it in the standard form of a complex number. So you need to get this into the new standard form of a complex number. Now rewrite your problem, 3 plus 2i minus 1 minus 4i plus negative 2 plus 4i. And so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract and then add. So we're going to subtract, add, subtract, add, and we're going to be doing 3 minus 1 plus negative 2. 3 minus 1 plus negative 2. That's going to give us 2 plus negative 2. That's giving us negative 4. And then we do the same 
with the imaginary parts. We're doing 2i minus negative 4i plus positive 4i. So we're doing 2i minus negative 4i plus 4i. Okay, that's going to give us 2i, this is really 2i plus 4i plus 4i. That's going to be plus 10i. Okay, so that's it for adding and subtracting. What we're going to do next is multiplying and dividing. So, in multiplying and dividing complex numbers, okay, we're going to start with some multiplying in number one. Okay, this is all just simplifying. We're performing the operation. It says 2 plus 3i times negative 1 plus 6i. So we're multiplying two complex numbers together. 2 plus 3i is one complex number, negative 1 plus 6i. They each have two terms. Two terms by two terms is going to produce four terms. 2 times negative 1 gives us negative 2. 3i times negative 1 gives us negative 3i. You can multiply them together. 3i times 6i, be careful, this gets people confused. This is 18i squared. Okay, i times i, i squared. Oh, I forgot a term. Hold on, let's make sure I follow. Negative 3i, okay. Let's do the, I did the, I jumped in there, but that's plus 12i and then plus 18i squared, sorry. So now we have to make sure we simplify four terms, right? We make sure we simplify. I can see that these are two like terms. That's going to give me plus 9i, and this term needs to be simplified. 18i squared, i squared is the same as negative 1. So 18 times negative 1. This is really negative 2 plus 9i minus 18, and then negative 2 minus 18 is going to give you negative 20. So this is negative 20 plus 9i. Okay. In number two, we have negative 3 plus 4i squared. You cannot have a property of exponent. You, there's no property of exponent going on here because I don't have a product inside. So the only way to simplify this is to write it out. This is the same factor twice. So we write it as negative 3 plus 4i times negative 3 plus 4i. And now we multiply it out. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. And then negative 3 times 4i is going to be negative. Let me make sure if you can't see this. Perhaps I should do this problem down here. Number 2. Negative 3 plus 4i squared is negative 3 plus 4i times negative 3 plus 4i. Okay, so now we multiply it out. That's 9 minus 12i minus 12i plus 16i squared. Combine like terms, so we got 9 minus 24i and then plus 16i squared. That's plus 16 times negative 1. That's minus 16 and then 9 minus 16 is going to put us at negative 7 minus 24i and that's it, because i is to the first power, and we're of the form a plus bi. In number three, notice we have negative one plus two i times negative one minus two i. So we multiply it out, that's gonna be one. Negative one times negative two i is gonna be positive two i. Two i times negative two i is gonna be negative, I'm sorry, two i times negative one is gonna be negative two i. And 2i times negative 2i is going to be negative 4i squared. So we go to combine these, and they actually cancel each other out. We're left with 1 minus 4i squared. We need to simplify this. This is 4i squared is 4 times negative 1. This is 1 minus 4 times negative 1. Negative 4 times negative 1, that's 1 plus 4, that's 5. This ends up simplifying to be the real number, okay, of 5. The product of negative 1 plus 2i and negative 1 minus 2i ends up being a real number of 5. And that is because our two imaginary numbers right here canceled each other out, and because we had i squared, it became a real number. This happened for a reason. Okay? It happened because if you look at this, this is very close to that difference of squares pattern where the two in the middle cancel out. 
I knew this was going to happen because what I have going on here, it's called complex conjugates. Okay? Complex conjugates. In complex conjugates, what it says is, if you have a plus bi and a minus bi, so the real part is the same and the sign in front of b is different. So notice negative 1 and negative 1 and then positive 2i and negative 2i. That's like the difference of two squares, that a plus b times that a minus b. So these are called complex conjugates, okay? When you have a plus bi and a minus bi, okay? The product of conjugates, if I multiply these together, the product is always a real number, okay? The product of conjugates is always a real number, okay? Keep that in mind. So for example, okay, so negative one, whoop, negative one plus two i and negative one minus two i are an example of conjugates. Seven minus three i and seven plus three i are an example of complex conjugates. When you multiply them together, your product will always be real. Okay, so now we're going to move on to dividing. Two problems up here. Number four is one over two plus three i, and number five is two plus five i over negative one plus six i. Okay, so notice it's division here because we have a fraction, right? That's implying that we're dividing, but there's a rule, okay? There is a rule about a simplified expression. In a simplified expression, you cannot have a square root in the denominator, okay? In a simplified expression, you cannot have a radical in the denominator. Now remember, whoop, i is the same as a square root of negative one. So, you technically have a radical in the denominator if you have i in the denominator. So, in a simplified expression, no i's in the denominator of a fraction. So, what that means is we're going to have to, when we're doing dividing, what we're really doing here is trying to write an equivalent fraction, meaning we're not changing its value, but we don't want i in the denominator. So what that means is we need the product to be a real number, okay? So we only know one way of making a fraction look different and not changing its value, as long as you multiply by a clever form of 1. So now, what could we multiply by 2 plus 3i so that we end up with a real number? Ah. Complex conjugates. Remember what we said about complex conjugates. Their product is always real. The complex conjugate of 2 plus 3i would be 2 minus 3i. Now to maintain the value of the fraction, whatever you do to the denominator, you must do to the numerator. So I'm going to have to erase my rule here because I need a little bit more room for this. Okay, so you have to multiply out the numerator and then the denominator. One, one term by two terms, so that's just going to produce two terms. One times two is two, one times negative three i is negative three i, but the denominator, I have two terms by two terms, so I'm going to get four terms. So two times two is four, two times negative three i is negative six i, three i times two is positive six i, three i times negative three i is negative nine i squared. So notice, those cancel, which you want to happen, you are intentionally doing this, so that the i is no longer in the denominator. And negative 9i squared, 4 minus 9i squared. i squared is negative 1. So this is negative 9 times negative 1. This is plus 9. So this gives us 2 minus 3i over 13. Now remember, you have to leave your solution. I, sorry, I didn't mean to say solution. This, we're not solving anything. Our Simplified expression has to be in the standard form of a complex number, a plus bi. So we just have to break this fraction up. This should be 2 over 13 minus 3 over 13 times i. Okay? It's the same as saying 3i over 13. So that's our final 
simplified expression. Notice i is no longer in the denominator of the fraction. Okay. The second one is very similar, except instead of having one term in your numerator, you now have two terms. But the issue here is, okay, you don't have any products, so you don't see any factors, so there is no simplifying you can do. I can't cross out the i's or anything, okay? I've got no common factors between the numerator and the denominator. I have one complex number divided by another. So what's the, the issue with this is, I should not have an i in the denominator. It's okay to have i in the numerator, but not in the denominator. So I have to multiply this by a clever form of one, so that would be the conjugate of the denominator. Negative 1 plus 6i, the conjugate would be negative 1 minus 6i. And so now it's two terms by two terms in the numerator and two terms by two terms in the denominator. So just be careful. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 2 times negative 6i is negative 12i. 5i times negative 1 is negative 5i. 5i times negative 6i is negative 30i squared. Then do the denominator. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 1 times negative 6i is 6i. 6i times negative 1 is negative 6i. 6i times negative 6i is negative 36i squared. Now let's start cleaning things up. In the numerator, I have negative 2. Negative 12i and negative 5i, that's negative 17i. And negative 30i squared, that's negative 30 times negative 1, that's positive 30. In the denominator, 6i and negative 6i cancel. This is 1 minus 36 times negative 1, that's 1 plus 36. So I can clean this up a little bit. Negative 2 plus 30, that's 28 minus 17i all over 37. And now we just break this up. This is 28 over 37 minus 17 over 37i. Okay, in number 6, we'll just do one more. If I have 1 plus 2i over i, okay, notice I don't have two terms in my denominator. I just have a pure imaginary number in my denominator, i. So just think of what's the simplest denominator here that will get me to a real number, okay? i, i will do that here. i times i is i squared. i squared is the smallest power that would be simplified down to a real number. So just make sure whatever you do to the denominator, you do to the numerator. So this is going to be i plus 2i squared. Okay, so clean this up. We, i can't be simplified, but 2i squared, that's plus 2 times negative 1, right? So this is i minus 2 over i squared is negative 1. So we have to clean this up a little bit. Okay, first break it up. So this would be negative 1i plus 2, and then that would just be 2 minus i. Okay, remember when you have a fraction x plus y over z, that's the same as x over z plus y over z. Okay. So, that's it for dividing. So now, I'm just going to show you solving with complex solutions, okay? So, now you're ready to now answer all quadratic equations, okay? You're going to be able to solve all quadratic equations, and you're no longer going to give your answer when you get a square root of a negative. You're no longer going to say no real solutions. You're now going to give your solutions in terms of their imaginary solutions, okay? So if we solve number one, we'll do 2x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals x squared plus x, okay? So we see that it's a quadratic. We always set it equal to zero. So we have to take away x squared, take away x. That gives us x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. So we can't factor this, so we go to the quadratic formula. So that's negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 1 squared minus 4 times a is 1 times c is 1 all over 2 times 1. And we simplify this, negative 1 plus or minus the square root of, and now let's get the value of the discriminant. That's going to be 
1 minus 4, that's going to give us negative 3 over 2. So now, you used to just say this is no real solution. Correct, it's not a real solution. They're imaginary solutions. But now that we know about imaginary solutions, you need to show your answer in the form a plus bi, because now you know this exists in our number system. Okay, so the first thing is we should be rewriting this in terms of i. So that's going to be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 times i all over 2. And now we break this up so that we show the real part and then the imaginary part. So that's going to be negative 1 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2i. So make sure from now on when you go to solve any time Let's say you solved completing the square and it was negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 7. You need to now write that as negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 7i. And don't say no real anymore. Now you know your solutions are imaginary and you must show them as a complex number. So every time you get the square root of a negative when you use that quadratic formula, you don't stop. You rewrite it in terms of i and then you rewrite your solutions in the standard form of a complex number. Okay, so make sure that when going forward, when you solve, you are now giving imaginary solutions. And that is it for complex numbers.